Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get 13F forms directly from the SEC into R. Here are some of the packages we're going to require, and I'll go over the manual process of getting these 13F forms. I left some links here that we're gonna go through. If we visit this first site of current events, this is what the site looks like. We wanna go ahead and search for the latest filings. So here we're gonna click the most recent. You can leave this unchanged, but we're gonna go ahead and insert 13F-HR, and we're gonna click Submit. Now from this page, we need to go ahead and extract the links to the forms. And if you see at the bottom left-hand side, those are the actual links we need. So for instance, if we click on one of these links, it'll take us to the filing. From here, we need to extract the URL to this text file. And within the text file, we're gonna go ahead and read this in and parse it into a table in R. So that is the visual of what we will be doing in R to get all the filings for the given day. And if we go back into our studio, the first thing we need to assign is our user agent to submit get request. So all you need to change from here is just give it a website or a domain along with the email address or else any requests will be blocked by the SEC. Once that's filled in, you can go ahead and run lines 11 and 12. Now the very first get request we're gonna do is to get all the links to the actual filings. So from line 17 through 25, we're gonna go through that website, which is this one. That is the URL we will be submitting a get request to. You don't need to change anything. It'll automatically grab the latest filings using this URL. Once you run this block, you should have all the links to all the filings. So as an example, all the URLs should look like this. Once we have this vector of links, we're gonna pass each of these links and do a bit of formatting so that we don't have to scrape the website again. And that's to get from the filing path, which is this one, to the text file. The good thing about the URL we're working with is that it's fairly similar to the one we need to the text file. So back in R, we're gonna build a function where we just pass in the link to a specific 13F form and a condition set to true or false of whether you wanna save these locally as binary files. And if we go ahead and open up this function and we scroll up here, we start off by clearing the memory as some of these filings get fairly large. Now from lines 35 through 43, we're gonna work with the link that was given. We're gonna format and extract certain numbers so that we get the correct URL to the text file. And what I'll be doing is I'll be clearing certain characters from the link that was passed in. So here we're gonna wipe out dash index HTML. Now we're left with this character. Next, we're gonna remove archives, Edgar, and data. And we're then gonna split by the forward slash so that we're left with two character vectors. Now the company CIK to the page will be this first element. And to format the access number, we're just gonna remove the dash. So that will be the second part to the URL. And the access number to the text file is just the second element of our formatted number. So it's essentially this. Once we have those three items, we can go ahead and pass them into our get request. I have already coded the correct URL. We just need to pass in those elements. So the company CIK page, the formatted access number, and just the regular access number. We're gonna pass in our user agent. So make sure that's updated in lines 11 and 12. Once that's read in, we're gonna extract the raw data. Now from the raw data, we need to extract all the info tables. So if we take a look at raw data, we need to search for any of these that have info tables. It's all the way down here. So we need to search within this HTML and find this information table. And this will get all the info tables within that HTML. So if you notice, if we open this up, here's where all the data is kept. So the script will go ahead and iterate through each and every info table from lines 55 all the way down to 79. And we're gonna pass in one through the length of info tables. And for each iteration, it'll go through all the info tables and convert the HTML into a data frame. So if we take a look at DF, this is what the data should look like for one iteration of info table, where we have the name of the issuer, title of class, the QCIP. I'm not sure what this column is for, but we have the value, the share amount, the share type, and then we have investment discretion and the voting rights, which are sole, shared, and none. And depending on the transaction, we may have additional columns, such as put call, if this was an options purchase, but you don't need to worry about setting or changing any of the columns, it will do it automatically. Now, back in the script here, once we have all the transactions, it will get saved into info table all. So within info table all, we now have all the transactions for the filing. The next step is to add certain columns with the metadata. So if we go back to our script here, 
Now for the metadata, which is lines 104 up until 128, I'm gonna search through the HTML and extract certain things I wanna to add to the information table. So to give you an overview, what I'm going to be extracting is the company CIK code. That is the CIK code of the company that submitted this 13F. I'm also going to be extracting the accession number. I'm gonna extract the report date, the file date, the company name, the number of entries we should have within the filing, the transaction total. And once we have extracted that, I'm going to convert that info table into a data frame and pass it into summary all. Now from here, I'm just going to be adding the things we extracted. So the company name, the CIK code, the 13F filing accession number, the reporting date, the filing date, the total number of transactions, and the total value of the transactions. Now the next couple of lines is just making sure some of these columns are numeric. And we're going to also add the average share price and the percentage of the portfolio. And if we take a look at summary all, and if we scroll to the right here, we now see that we have added the company name, the company CIK code, the filing number, the report date, the filing date, the number of transactions that we should have. So that's 62. And we do see that we have 62 entries and the filing value, which is just the sum of this value column. And just as a reminder, this column along with the share amount are in thousands. Now we don't need to add the thousands to get the average share price if these two columns are both in thousands, which means that this last column filing value is also in thousands so if you're working with this data just keep that in mind once we have generated this table you have the option to save it as a binary file or just make sure you change the path here if you change your save local flag to true and that's just as a safety check in case something crashes if you're calling multiple 13f forms you don't want to have to restart from the beginning but i've tested this a couple of times and i did not have any issues once we have that summary table formatted we can just go ahead and return it and that will be the last line within our wrapper so if we go ahead and minimize this function you would want to run it and as an example we're just going to run the hundredth link so if we run lines 166 and if we take a look at that data frame we now see that everything returned correctly. So that was an example of how the function will behave. And if you wanna download all the 13Fs for all the links, we're gonna pass all the links into this L apply, and we're gonna set our system to sleep every two seconds, since the rate limit is 10 requests per second. For the most part, you should be okay, but you just wanna add that system sleep since the length of the 13F forms differ. Some companies may have one transaction, whereas another company has thousands. Overall, it doesn't take too long to run i had over 200 links and the total time it took to download all was about 30 minutes if we take a look at all this is the table for all the filings that day so we have close to 100,000 entries and 22 columns and for the most part, it seemed that everything returned okay. Now from here, it's up to you what you want to do with this data. But what I wanted to know was the number of transactions for each of these companies. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the QSIP for each and see which of these companies had the majority of the transactions. So back in our script, the last couple of lines are just to create a summary table. So we're going to pass in our table called all. We're going to group by QSIP and reframe to return the total value, which is the sum of value and the total number of shares, which is the sum of share amount. We're gonna order in decreasing fashion by the total value. We're gonna add the average price, which is the total value by the total shares. And we're also gonna go ahead and add the company name by looking up the QSIP from our main table. So if we take a look at table sum, and this is just for that given day, we see that the majority of the transactions were for Microsoft, Apple, and Alphabet. We can also take a look at the values for the puts and the calls. So the same process as above, where we just split that column called put call by calls and puts. And if we take a look at the call table and put table, we can now see the majority of the transactions for the puts. And it looks like these were just ETFs. And for the calls, we have a couple ETFs and what looks like a company here. Well, with that, guys, this concludes the video. You can perhaps take this function and schedule it to download all the transactions at the end of the day so that you can analyze the data later. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.